Drive Home and The Edge with Donna and Kathy. We are actually at the Alabama State Capitol right now with one of my favorite guys right here. This is our honorable Alabama Secretary of State, John Merrill. John, so good to be with you again Great today. to be with you, my friend. I'm so glad y'all can come to the Capitol today. Oh, we are too. Thanks for letting us come in. Oh, look, we're delighted to have y'all and for you to be able to broadcast from this location. Not a lot of people had the opportunity to do this and Anytime we've had some of our media partners reach out and want to, we certainly want to accommodate them because this is your capital. Well, thank you because we're on several different television stations now. We've really branched mm -hmm. out. We're on channel 182 on Charter Communications, Abundant TV, found on Roku, Apple yes. TV, and Amazon Fire, and in Australia. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's oh awesome. my goodness. So we're <laughs> everywhere now. Wow. Not just in Alabama, all oh, over the goodness. United States and even out of the United States. That's great. So that's good. I just wanted to mention, John, that you've been an absolute fantastic Alabama Secretary, I mean, Secretary of State, and so many great things have happened. And I wanted to mention this, Kathy, I mentioned this mm -hmm. to you on the way to Montgomery. A lot of other state governors have actually called on you to find out how you did such a good job with the election. Well, you're kind to mention that. As a matter of fact, uh, one of those folks that I speak to regularly, his birthday is today. That's Brian Kemp, who's the oh, governor of Georgia. Oh, yeah. I spoke, I, I spoke to Governor Kemp this morning bright and early because he, he starts his day about 5 a.m. every morning. But he is uh, an outstanding leader and doing a tremendous job over there. And, we, and this show, um, actually, Mr. Mill, it may air before the election. And then actually, sometimes we air some of these popular shows after the election right. as well. Okay, so it, we'll wish him a happy birthday. Yes. And then he'll actually get a late happy birthday yes, as well. Yes, absolutely, because right? we want him to get the late happy birthday on <laughs> November the 8th That's when right. he gets reelected That's to right. one more term as George's governor. Absolutely. And now, is this your uh, last term? Yes, right? and my last day in office will be January the 15th. So you're limited by law to only two terms, mm -hmm. uh, consecutive elected terms mm -hmm. in the position. And I am fast approaching the end of my second term. So yeah. it's an exciting time. It's also uh, uh, a sad time because I love the job and we've been able to do so much good for so many people all around the mm -hmm. state. But, you know, it's time for another person to come and take the reins here. And so we'll be moving on to other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you've really been boots on the ground. You visited every county multiple times. That's right. We've appreciated you coming to North Alabama. Thank you for that. You know, actually, I was talking to somebody about that this morning. This is the 11th time, the 10th mm -hmm. year in a row that I will have been to all 67 counties. And as of today, I've been to 62 of the 67 counties for 421 unique visits wow. to those 62 counties and uh, we will get the rest of them between now and, and December 31st but uh, we are always excited whenever we have the opportunity to go to those local counties and to interact with uh, those folks that live in those communities and make sure we're helping them meet their needs you know it's funny because there's benefits to doing that uh, a lot of different times sometimes people may not think of something like this but this morning as I was returning from mm -hmm. Gadsden, I got a call from my assistant and she said, you need to do an interview with a TV station in Huntsville. And you really need to do it before you get back here. They can't wait, their deadline is too early. And I said, well, when, when is it gonna be? And she said, well, I'll find out, but I'll reach back to you. And I said, well, whenever you call me, I'll have a place where I can pull off the road and then I can do the interview. And when she called, I knew that there was a place within that particular location where I could pull off and it was a funeral home oh, <laughs> in Shelby County. So I went there. Nice it's a oh, nice background. Yeah, you know, it yeah, looked all professional yeah. and so it was, it was good. So yeah. you, not every elected official can do that. Right, right. And then hasn't it been wonderful with Zoom now? Oh, yes. You can, you, can, you can pull over on the side yes, of the road and you, do it. You can, can you even know, though right? I prefer to do it in person uh -huh. whenever I can, if I'm meeting or right. doing an interview, just like with y'all being here, mm -hmm. as opposed to us trying to do this through the Internet, which, mm -hmm. you know, it has benefits, but that's not the it's best. Glitches, that's right. That's right. right. We've been through a few glitches together with the Internet. Yeah, I wanted to also mention one of your fans in, up in DeKalb County is Bobby Ledbetter with Twin City News. I love ourselves. Bobby Ledbetter. I told Bobby that we were going to be here with you, and he said, make sure we told you hello from him. And you've been so kind to come to all these food events. 
he has put through uh, the past few years. Well, you are so kind to mention that, but my involvement is directly because of you and because of you taking time to make sure that we knew about it and we had it on our calendar so we could be there and support the event and to be able to go and to interact with all those families that would come and get those turkeys right. and those groceries and uh, just let them know how much they're uh, appreciated and what an integral part of the community that they need to be, let alone just being a resident, they need to know that they have something to offer. And Bobby is so kind to treat everybody the same way and to make sure that they all know that they're loved. Absolutely. You know, you and I could be Walmart greeters because we seem to be the greeters. That's right. At every one of those. That's right. Events. You're the greeter. I just interact with them and talk to them about our work in our office right. and the things we're so doing. Be our next Donna week. goes to every car and she welcomes them. She tells them what they're doing, and where they need to go. And tell them to go right She's running on. the show, so it's good. Okay, so I have to ask a question, Mr. Brown. I'm excited. This may. This is a conclusion to your service right now as Secretary of State. What do you foresee the future holding? Well, can I can I get a little glimpse yes, of that for you? Yes, I have um, had a number of people talk mm -hmm. to me about the possibility of of working with them and helping them with their particular area. Uh, some in education, some in public service, some in state government, mm -hmm. some at the federal level some in the private sector and so there's a number of things that we're making sure that we're fully vetting and evaluating right. so we'll take uh, the best opportunity that we have for our family to make sure that we're where we need to be right. and at that point then there'll be a public announcement but you know we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be the best and most impactful we can possibly be now and in the future. Yes. And our state has just been, oh my, I mean, I'm just proud to be an Alabama citizen. Well, you know, we're we live in the best state yes. in the union. And a lot of people, they don't believe that, but mm -hmm. if they ever spend any time here, they would know. Oh, they would. Yes. We don't have people that come here and then leave. Right. We have people that come here and stay. We wish some of them would leave. But <laughs> I'm just saying that's just the way it is. I think it. I'd say what you're saying. Uh, well, uh, our economy has done so well. Yes. And we've got a lot of states that have not done that's so well. That's exactly right. And Governor Ivey's leadership mm -hmm. has been extraordinarily strong to help us be where we mm -hmm. need to be as we continue to move forward. Yes. Now, Kathy, you know Merrill, Merrill, Matthews, and Allen. That's not like I'm in contact with Yeah, yeah. yeah one of my clients. Because I live in Calhoun County. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like Doug. It was so fun because I, I got to call Mr. Merrill, and yeah. I said, I would really love to have an interview with John Merrill. It goes back when he first started running right. for office. And so they like, oh, I'm talking to you. So that was pretty neat. But he's a, a man of integrity and well, as well as you. Thank you so much. And our, our family's roots are, are deeply mm -hmm. embedded in Calhoun and Cleveland counties where mm -hmm. I'm from. and. My uncle was the chief of police in Oxford for 30 years, yeah. in addition to the attorneys that that she's talking about. And uh, we have been blessed by having the support of so many families in that part of the state over the years. So y'all are kind to mention that. Well, in Calhoun and Cleburne, you know, we're really close. They're, they're our, our back door. So. That's right. And Donna was from Oxford. Now she moved away and moved to Geraldine. Right. I've still been in White Plains and Calhoun County years but and my mom my used to teach in my place uh -huh. yes she, she she was a teacher there when she first got started and then she went to ramburn and then she went to halfland and she was there for 28 years so 30 years total in public education right my daughter knew about her actually because she's a teacher she's a fax teacher at white oh, Plains. that's great yes sir so um, we have a love for education and i'm an old nurse and my Oldest daughter's a nurse, as well as long as as well as doing some TV on and off right. over the years. Right. Just fell back into this with Donna. Well, so that's great. I'm glad to be here with you. Well, you're and 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 helping our state, Thank and you. I want you to continue to do that Thank because you. we have really flourished. I appreciate that so yeah. very much. You're very kind to say that. It's uh, been a real thrill for me to be able to serve in this role. Mm -hmm. and, and serve is true. You have been a servant. You know, there are people who are did come into an elected position, and then there are some people who just serve, and that's what you've been doing. Thank you for that. And I wanted to mention that awesome wife, wife of yours, Cindy. 
That is definitely, I love her. She's been to several events with us as well. She has, and today she was working up in Winston County in Lynn, Alabama, at Lynn Elementary School. And she was at Double Springs earlier in the week. And uh, her job as a retired educator mm -hmm. now has her working in the Department of Early Childhood Education. Mm -hmm. So she's still trying to help those she's young families and those young children that are trying mm -hmm. to improve their educational foundation and their mm -hmm. overall quality of life. Mm -hmm. Well, I know. Uh, she had to be elated with the study that we are like on top when it came to the test scores. That's right. Through the COVID that's situation. Right. That's right. Is that right? That's right. And that's very, very positive for our state. We always want to build on that foundation because the future of our state relies mm -hmm. on how strong the educational system is and what mm -hmm. we're able to do for our young people. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, we're in farming country too. Our farmers love you as well. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. We've had a lot of support from the Farmers Federation mm -hmm. and the people who are farmers that are not necessarily active members of the Farmers Federation. But I think that's because I grew up in, in a farming community, not on the farm. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time on the farm where my mama and papa live. But now we have the farm and it's a uh, a real treasure for us and our family. Right, because the Alabama Farmer, Farmers Federation is a big backbone of our state. That is exactly right. Yes, and uh, I mean, if you don't know how to actually become a member, anybody can become a member of the Farmers Federation. That's right. You can go to your local Alpha office. That's right. And join. It's that easy. Yeah, we encourage people to do that because yes. they have a strong voice for conservative government in our state and mm -hmm. they always make their position well known and we want people to support that position right. because That's that right. position is for moving Alabama forward always. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there anything that you would like to share with us about maybe a specific experience that happened in your time of service that it stands out. Well, I think coming to Fort Payne, Alabama. <laughs> probably one of the, the biggest things that has happened uh, that really changed the future of our state mm -hmm. was back in our first term when we were able to change our laws to have the SEC primary. So right. Alabama would move up in the selection sequence for Democrat and Republican nominees for the presidency. And that change actually brought uh, more than a dozen uh, Republicans and Democrats to our state campaigning for the presidency. And that was the most ever in the history of our state. So to have been a part of that and to have made that happen really means a great deal to me personally. It meant a lot to our people. And we want our people to have their voice heard when it comes mm -hmm. to that selection process. So as an event or an activity, that was probably key uh, for us in remembering that. As far as accomplishments are concerned, uh, the fact that we've broken every record in the history of the state for voter participation election after election. That's right. And Tuesday, November the 8th, will be the 46th election that we've administered since I've been in this mm -hmm. role. But breaking records for voter registration as of today with 2,170,000 Three hundred eighty-one new voters in wow. the state, and a state record three million six hundred eighty-nine thousand three hundred and twenty-five registered voters in the state of Alabama is phenomenal. Well, so it's been about wonderful. voter education as well, and I know you put quite a few things out there for for all of the citizens. Absolutely, we have worked really hard to make sure that people know that we want them to participate and we want them to have their voice heard. Mm -hmm. And it definitely is. And you also have a magazine you hand out, which That's is right. very helpful. Let's That's talk right. about that for a Yes, our annual report is something that we produce to remind people of the mm -hmm. accomplishments that we produced in the previous year and to make sure that they know uh, what this office is all about. One of the things that we discovered after I became Alabama's 53rd secretary, which was se uh, seven years and nine months and 15 days ago, uh -huh. was that there weren't <laughs> a, whole, <laughs> a whole lot of people that really understood what this position was about or what right. it did even though it's the oldest office in the history mm -hmm. of the state. So we worked really hard to educate people, and that's part of what we did in our business mm -hmm. to each county when I would be speaking to Rotary Clubs or Civitan Clubs mm -hmm. or Lions Clubs or cool. even JCs mm -hmm. or uh, all of those 
different groups to make sure that they understood why this office is important and what it means to business in Alabama as well as in elections. Right. And also during the census, you know, when that was being taken, you were really yeah. active in that as well. We were because it's so important to our state to preserve the number of elected officials that we have at the congressional level so we can get the benefit that we need having those people there, receiving that federal funding for education, mm -hmm. for roads and bridges, infrastructure improvements, uh, to make sure that Alabama continues to move forward in all of those areas. And that's, that's why it's so important for you young people to go register to vote, correct? Absolutely. Because that's a counting head, just like the census is, that's right. correct? That's right, and if they are within six months of an election, mm -hmm. they can register early and not have to go on their birthday. Uh, that way they will be registered voters when that time comes. And that enables us to make it easier for them. And mm -hmm. our singular goal in election administration, voter registration, is to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat in Alabama. Right, and you know what I can say, our system, y'all, is you just don't know how good Alabama is. My son attends college out of state yes. in Tennessee. He had to vote, right? He said, Mom, I'm not going to vote. No, you're going to vote. Right. So he actually did exactly what he said. It was like that, he said. It was so simple, That's great. so easy. He felt secure. He felt like his vote was counted. Right. And, and that is what's important in you it. You know, we have one of the longest periods of time before the election mm -hmm. to be prepared to vote, actually 55 days. And I voted 50 days before the election. So right. my, my vote has been in the safe waiting to be counted for <laughs> almost two months. What about that? That's right. In fact, you know, I feel good That's about good. young people. And, you know, my grandmother always worked the polls. Yes. And so I took the torch and started to do it this time. Yes. And I had a great, great time. But I noticed the excitement of young people when they were coming in to vote. And I saw a lot of kids coming in with their parents. It made me feel really, really good about the future. That's very important, and one of the things that we've done since I've been the secretary is to pass legislation that has enabled mm -hmm. young people who are 16 or 17 to be able to work the polls mm -hmm. and to be able to do everything that a seasoned poll worker can do except for handle the ballot. Mm -hmm. So that has been very well received. Mm -hmm. I actually spoke to Judge Hassel today in Etowah County when I was visiting him there in Gadsden. And he told me he had to turn some young people away. So that means that he has more than 60 young people that are already scheduled to work That's the election. Great. That's great holiday. news. That's great because, uh, I, you know, some days you think, oh, I'm really worried about our young people. You know, uh, what is society coming to? Work at the and it's those things, those small things, like That's you right. starting that, that can involve the children. And guess what? Then it involves the parents That's right. and then the future generations. And then they get involved and maybe they'll be a politician right. down the road. That's right. Because what you people out there don't realize is even though you're a great politician, he's also a special, just a person, a husband, a dad. You know, a real person. And that, that's what a lot of people, they think, oh, I'm scared to talk to them. They're real, that's aren't exactly they? Right. You're real. That's right. And you know? so there should not ever be any kind of intimidation factor. And if they ever met me, they wouldn't be intimidated. Well, I mean, <laughs> we today just... is the first day I have right. like, met you right. personally. And I just feel at home. Thank you. And so that's the way much. we want our children to feel. People that come into our homes, Donna's home, they'll come to her farm. Right. You know? Let's talk automation. Because, I mean, elections have really changed since my yes. grandmother actually yes. wanted to post. She said they, would, they could not go home. Everything had to be done by hand. And there would be, like, past midnight some days right. before they would get home. So let's talk about that. Well, we're, we're very fortunate to have the best equipment that's available in election administration. And uh, we do not have any systems connected to the Internet, so people can rest easy about that. All of our machines have been constructed since I've been the secretary. And they were all custom built without modem, so you can't transfer data electronically. Wow. But it starts with a check-in procedure when you go in and you show your ID and they scan it and then they check you in. Uh, we know you're who you say mm -hmm. you are and 
you would be locked out of other equipment so you can't go somewhere else and attempt to vote in person and then after you vote then you get ready to turn your ballot into the tabulator or the voting machine as mm -hmm. people would call it when it's inserted and received and the scan occurs it registers the vote and then at that point you are secure in knowing that your vote has counted for the candidate of your choice and for the amendments and we'll have 10 of those this time will be registered for your position on those issues and that will enable you to be able to rest comfortably in knowing that all the people that voted that day will have their voice heard and their vote counted in a secure way. Let's talk amendments. The most confusing thing on the ballot. How can we get some good information about what they're about? Great question. One of the things that we encourage people to do is to visit our website at alabamavotes.gov and visit the Fair Ballot Commission okay. pull down so they can check out the language that's been prepared by this group of individuals and they have written this language in such a way that anybody can understand it because we don't want it to be a confusing time when you mm -hmm. go to the polls. We want it to be an informed time where your reasoned vote will be cast. And this process with the Fair Ballot Commission has a brief paragraph that's written on each one of the amendments. So you know that this is what it actually means and what it will mean if it passes. And that's been very successful. That legislation has passed since we've been in this position mm -hmm. and that enables people to be um, ready to process the information and cast their vote on that issue in an informed way. You know more and more people are getting out there and they would like to be part of a solution. So let's talk with folks who are thinking about running next time around. What sure. do they need to do to prepare to run for office? Well the main thing that people need to do when they're getting ready to run for office is to make sure that they're informed about the things that are going on in their community. And the only way to do that is by being involved in your community. Mm -hmm. And if they make that commitment, then they will be recognized as a natural candidate for public office. Mm -hmm. Then they need to assemble their friends and come up with a plan about how they would like to move forward in a campaign for city council, for county commission, for the mm -hmm. school board, for the legislature, for Congress, for a statewide office. And when they do those things and they're fully prepared, they'll be better uh, prepared to be successful. Mm -hmm. And you, you've always listened to the heart of the people. And I've noticed when you would come to the Cattle Stampede Steakhouse, is where you've spoken a lot in Fort Payne, Alabama. But I've noticed you when you're up there on the stage, people are asking questions. You look them in the eye, and not the eyes always meet. And that's important, right? Well, I try to make sure that people know that when they have questions, we want them answered mm -hmm. to their satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That's whether they send an email here, they mm -hmm. have a telephone call here, whether I'm interacting with them right. face to face because we want them to feel as though they've got a direct contact to their secretary and their secretary's team. That's why on my business card, I print my cell phone number. And then anytime I speak, even when I'm doing interviews, I'll let, make sure that people know they can call 334-328-2787, which is my cell phone. And then they can call me directly if they have a question or a concern about a particular issue. We're ready to close, and I wanted to talk to you just for a little bit over five minutes left in this segment. What's the most, what are you going to miss most about not being Alabama Secretary of State? Well, I think the biggest thing is being able to help individuals and to help families as they have issues that are introduced to them, and they don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I, I get calls all the time. I got a call this morning from a district attorney in the state that was checking on an issue that I had introduced to him about a week and a half ago. And mm -hmm. he was concerned that he had not heard from that family. And I reached out to that family and reminded them, you know, you need to make sure you follow up with right. the, the DA and then sent him a message back and said, look, uh, not everybody would have done that to have followed up. But for me to be able to refer people, to have a personal relationship with people so they know that their problem is going to be solved, their issue is going to be addressed, means a lot to me because I want everybody to have as high quality of life mm -hmm. as they can have. Yeah, and it's important that you care. Mm -hmm. They know you're, you're for real. I believe that, you know? yes ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, a couple minutes left, so let's talk with the folks about voting. 
<laughs> this I mean, you must, okay? Or we're going to go to your house. We're going to eat all of your food. <laughs> so why is it so important? Well, of course, the, the date to register to vote has passed, right? And right. you cannot modify your record now, uh, but. You should be informed about where your polling place is, so visit our website at alabamavotes.gov, download the mobile app at Vote for Alabama, see where you're supposed to vote, mm -hmm. what the races are that are going to be on your ballot, and then go to the polls prepared with your photo ID. When you check in, receive your ballot, mark your ballot for the candidates of your choice for the issues that are presented to you as constitutional amendments, which ones that you favor, which ones you're opposed to. Submit that ballot by turning it in to the tabulator mm -hmm. and then letting it count for the candidates of your choice and the issues that are important to you. And then you will have done your civic duty. And it's real easy to find where you're supposed to vote when you visit those sites. Uh, all 1,980 polling sites uh, will <laughs> be welcoming yeah. you on election day. Yeah, absolutely. One minute left. What do you want to tell everybody in the state of Alabama and everywhere else before we leave? Well, I just want to thank you for the privilege that I've had to be able to serve the people of Alabama and to thank these two fine ladies for coming to Montgomery today to keep you informed about issues that are so very important to you and to let you know what we're doing here so you can be better informed about your state capital. Absolutely. John, thank you so much. Thank you, Donna. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You stay tuned. We'll be back next with another awesome guest. We're about to make your life just a little bit easier. Join Tony and April at Tony's Pizza and Subs in Center and Cedar Bluff, Alabama. We're cooking up some pot delicious pizzas and we'd like to bake one for you. We are home-owned, not a chain, and our pizzas are fresh, homemade with our dough made fresh daily. We have a full menu including fresh, never frozen wings, salad bars, sud sandwiches, and much more. In center, we have a private dining area for birthday parties, club meetings, and other events. We'll be waiting for you at 1820 East Bypass and Center, and in Cedar Bluff, 3812 Alabama Highway 9. For your convenience, you can call in your order at our center location, 256-92-PIZZA, or Cedar Bluff, 256-557-8651. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018.